Previously, we have looked at lengths of vectors and distances between vectors. In this video, we'll introduce angles as a second important geometric concept that will allow us to define orthogonality. Orthogonality is central to projections and dimensionality reduction. Similar to lengths and distances, the angle between two vectors is defined through the inner product. If we have two vectors, x and y, and we want to determine the angle between them, we can use the following relationship. The cosine of this angle between the two vectors is given by the inner product between the two vectors divided by the norm of x times the norm of y. Let us have a look at an example. And let's compute an angle between two vectors x, which is 1, 1, and y, which is 1, 2. Let's quickly draw this. This is x. And this is y. And we're interested in the angle omega between those. If we use a dot product as the inner product, we get that the cosine of omega is x transpose y divided by the square root of x transpose x times y transpose y, which is 3 divided by the square root of 10. This means the angle is approximately 0.32 radians or 18 degrees. Intuitively, the angle between two vectors tells us how similar their orientations are. Let's look at another example in 2D, again with the dot product as the inner product. We're going to look at the same vector x that we used to have before, so x equals 1, 1, which is this vector over here. And now we choose y to be minus 1 and plus 1, and this is this vector. Now we're going to compute the angle between these two vectors, and we see that the cosine of this angle between x and y is with the dot product x transpose times y divided by the norm of x times the norm of y. And this evaluates to 0. This means that omega is pi over 2 in, in radians, or if we want to say this in degrees, we have 90 degrees. This is an example where two vectors are orthogonal. Generally, the inner product allows us to characterize orthogonality. Two vectors x and y, where x and y are non-zero vectors, are orthogonal if and only if their inner product is zero. This also means that orthogonality is defined with respect to an inner product. And vectors that are orthogonal with respect to one inner product do not have to be orthogonal with respect to another inner product. Let's take these two vectors that we just had, where the dot product between them gave that they are orthogonal, but now we're going to choose a different inner product. In particular, we're going to choose the inner product between x and y to be x transpose times the matrix 2, 0, 0, 1 times y. And if we choose this inner product, it follows that the inner product between x and y is minus 1. This means that the two vectors are not orthogonal with respect to this particular inner product. From a geometric point of view, we can think of two orthogonal vectors as two vectors that are most dissimilar and have nothing in common besides the origin. We can also find a basis of a vector space such that the basis vectors are all orthogonal to each other. That means we get the inner product between bi and bj is 0 um, if i is not the same index as j. And we can also use the inner product to normalize these basis vectors. That means we can make sure that every bi 
has length 1. Then we call this an orthonormal basis. In this video, we discussed how to compute angles between vectors using inner products. We also introduced the concept of orthogonality and saw that vectors may be orthogonal with respect to one inner product, but not necessarily if we change the inner product. We will be exploiting orthogonality later on in the course. If we have a vector and we want to compute the smallest difference vector to any point on a line that does not contain the vector, then we will end up finding a point on the line such that the segment between the point and the original vector is orthogonal to that line. <laughs>